In this week's video, we're using Judy's Magic Cast On as a provisional cast on. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. Well, this is the fourth video in a series on cast on methods that can be used as a provisional cast on or as a closed cast on, the sort you'd need for starting a toe up sock. Last week I showed you how to use Judy's Magic Cast On as a closed cast on. This week I'll show you how to use it as a provisional cast on. If you aren't already familiar with Judy's Magic Cast On as it's typically used, I would suggest watching last week's video. There's a link at the top of the screen there that will take you to that video. As provisional cast on methods, the Turkish cast on and figure eight cast on methods, which I demonstrated earlier in this series, are basically interchangeable with each other. In many cases, Judy's magic cast on is also interchangeable, but it does have some qualities that can limit it or enhance it when it comes to using it as a provisional cast on. So let's get started. To use Judy's Magic Cast On as a provisional cast on, we're going to use two circular needles and two balls of yarn. Now I'm using two colors here just for the demonstration purposes. Often they will be the same color and you can use the two ends of the same ball of yarn to get started. With the, clo with the closed cast on version, we, we measured off a tail and then used the tail to cast on loops onto one needle and the working end to cast on the loops of the other needle. And you can do that with a provisional cast on uh, if you know how much tail to measure off. Closed cast, on cast ons tend to be fairly short, a couple of inches, while a provisional cast on might be short it often is quite lengthy, could be hundreds of stitches in some cases. Another difference between a closed cast on and a provisional cast on is that for the closed cast on, if we needed to cast on 20 stitches, we would cast on 10 stitches onto each needle for a total of 20. And that's because we work all of the stitches in every round. For provisional cast on, if we need to cast on 20 stitches, we would cast on 20 stitches onto each needle because one of the needle is just holding the provisional loops until they're used later, while the other needle is going to be the one that we actually knit from. So all of the stitches that we need for that needle need to be cast on, the same number needs to be cast on both needles. There are a couple of ways to get started with, with two different yarn tails. One is to simply hold them both together and create a slip knot, a double slip knot, and then slide that onto one of the needles and tighten the loops. Now this is just to anchor the two tails together and give you some tension for when you're casting on. This does not count as a stitch. If you're using an animal fiber yarn that is not a machine washable so that it will felt, what you can do is use a felted join and you can splice the two ends of the yarn together. If your yarn is not a fiber that can be felted together, you can use a different sort of join. You could use a Russian join or a braided join or any other sort of join that you um, know that will bond two ends together. So I'm going to do a felted join of these two pieces of yarn. You split the plies, so you take half the plies out for about an inch or so. So these each have half the plies. Then you moisten these two yarn tails. I usually just suck on them for a minute. Then you can lay them across. If, you're, if these two are the same color, then you can just lay them across each other. Now you've, you've uh, recreated the number of plies the yarn actually is. Since I'm using two colors, I will fold them back on like this to create a link so that I link them together. And then I will felt them by rubbing my hands together until my hands are just super hot and that will felt them. Okay, so now I've joined these two ends together. So you get started the way you would for um, the closed cast on. You slide the two, you slide the strand um, 
between the two needles and this produces the first stitch on the lower needle and with Judy's Magic Cast On we're alternating uh, stitches on the lower needle with the upper needle. The upper yarn creates loops on the lower needle. The lower yarn creates loops on the upper needle. If you're not already familiar with Judy's Magic Cast On, like if you've never done it before, never seen it before, I would suggest watching the previous video because this video is more about how to use this cast on as a provisional cast on and less about how to physically get the stitches on the needle. I've got quite a few here. I'm actually going to cast on a hundred stitches so that I can show you how to join in the round. Okay, I don't actually know how many stitches I have. I'm gonna pretend it's enough for me to join in the round. One of the reasons for splicing the two tails together is because if you do need a large number of stitches, you don't have to estimate the tail. You can keep the yarn attached to the provisional loops uh, while you're working with the other loops. So I find that very useful. I have completed the cast and I have the smooth side facing me and there's the bumpy side on the back. So I'm going to keep the smooth side facing me. And I wanna make sure that I link these two yarns together before I join them. I wanna make sure that they're linked um, before I continue knitting with them. So I wanna do as I would do with any project where I was joining in the round. I wanna make sure all the stitches on that upper needle are all on the upper needle the entire time before I join them. I can take this lower needle and just pull it so that the stitches are resting on the cable and this tip can be out of the way. So now I'm ready to join in the round. So I have two choices at this point. I can leave this yarn attached until I'm ready to work the provisional um, stitches in the opposite direction. Or if, it's, if I'm using the two ends of the same ball of yarn and I'm going to need more than that ball of yarn to complete the project, I could cut the tail at this point and leave a good four to six inches. I could, re I could splice this end together later or I could just join the yarn as I work. But this way I only have, um, potentially I will have no tails here where the, this is joining in both directions or I'll only have two. If I use the double slip knot, I would have those two tails right here and then I would have, uh, I could have a, end up with two more tails if I cut this and then I rejoin. So, there you have potentially zero tails to deal with at this point or up to four depending on whether you do the double slip knot and whether you cut and rejoin the yarn later but when it is when it is time to work the provisional cast on in the opposite direction the yarn the working yarn is sitting here waiting for me um, with the right side facing and i can then knit in the in um, in the round with this yarn already attached so with Judy's Magic Cast On, we have a smooth side and we have the pearl bump side. So depending on what your stitch pattern is that you'll be using if you're knitting flat, you may be knitting back and forth across the upper stitches or you may be knitting back and forth across the lower stitches. So uh, it depends on what you need your first row to be. If you're working in garter stitch or in stockinette, you would turn the work so that the purl side faces you. Then you want to make sure that these two uh, yarns are linked. So here I'm going to swap them around like that so that whatever yarn I use to cast on the loops is going to be the yarn that I use uh, to knit with here. I'm going to pull the lower needle out so that those stitches rest on that needle. So now, I am ready to work these stitches. So if I'm working in stockinette, this will be a wrong side row that I'll be starting with. So I'll be starting with a purl row. If I'm going to be working in garter stitch, then I move the yarn to the back so that I can knit across these because these are the purl bumps. So, I, so in, that, in that case, I'll be knitting back and forth. Or if your pattern has you starting with a wrong side row as row number one, then you can turn and have this side of the work facing you. But if you need the, if you're working in some sort of stockinette type of fabric and the first row has to be uh, a right side row, and you, so you need the smooth size, 
side facing you when you work that first row, the pearls are on the back. Then what you do is after you finish your cast on, you rotate the needle so that they're pointing in the opposite direction. Then you pull, this is now your bottom needle. So these, are, these now count as your provisional loops. And then you'll be working back and forth across this upper needle. And again, you want to make sure that you have these two uh, yarns crossed and that you will be using the yarn that you had created um, the cast on loops with. So in this case, I use this blue yarn. So I wanna make sure that I'm knitting with this blue yarn and that it's linked uh, around that purple yarn on the back. If I was doing some sort of lace pattern, for example, in the first row had my yarn overs and some decreases uh, that I needed to work across, then I could do it this way. When you return to the provisional cast on edge, it will depend um, whether that yarn tail is of the provisional loops is positioned in the right place will depend on what the stitch pattern is you're using and what your first row needs to be uh, and whether you worked across the top loops back and forth or you had rotated to work across the bottom loops. So you wanna work you know, first round or two or the first row or two before you make any cuts in the tails that you have. This just keeps everything secure. And then later, if you do need to cut the tail because you have to join at the other end, you can do that. Here's an example of a strip of fabric that was grafted together. So the starting end was grafted to the live stitches at the end of the strip. And when you are grafting the same piece of fabric to one end to the other, you can graft with no jog. There's no, it's, it's perfectly in pattern. The edges are even, there's no half stitch offset. So this was done uh, in using Judy's Magic Cast On, but this could have been done with the Turkish or figure eight cast on. Here is an example of something that was um, worked in pattern. So I had knit three, purl five, knit three, all the way. And then I grafted this live stitches off the needles and um, there are a couple of issue, issues with this. Um, you can see that, the, that there's no half stitch offset. These, these stitches are completely continuous um, across where the graft is. The graft is where you see these um, two ends here. Uh, there was a little problem over here because I was grafting live off the stitches and switching from pearls to knits, I messed up a little bit. But, um, but it's still in pattern. I, that, I, that's, that's my fault. That's not a fault of, of um, the possibilities of using a provisional cast on. So this was done, I don't remember if I did this with the Turkish cast on or the figure eight, probably the Turkish. And um, so you get the perfect continuity across the graph. So here's the same thing done in Judy's magic cast on. And here's where you see the problem with the provisional loops forming knit stitches. It's fine when you're knitting um, stitches across the graft, but here I needed purl stitches on both sides of the graft, and that pattern is interrupted with that row of knits across the center. Now, this is going to happen whether you um, graft or whether you're just knitting in the opposite direction. In fact, it'll be worse if you're knitting in the opposite direction because you'll also have the half stitch offset um, to boot. So I would not use Judy's Magic Cast On if I were going to graft the two ends together or if I were going to be working in a knit purl stitch pattern in both directions because you'd have that row of knits interrupting. Judy's Magic Cast On has many of the same advantages as the other cast on methods in this series when used as a provisional cast on. There's no temporary edge made of waste yarn to remove and no stitches to recapture. The stitch count is exactly what you'd need when working in the opposite direction. You aren't one stitch short as you can be with other provisional cast on methods. The stitches are already sitting on the needle in the correct orientation, so there's no need to reseat any of them as you must for the figure eight cast on.
One disadvantage Judy's Magic Cast on shares with the Turkish and figure eight cast on methods is that at least one circular needle is needed in order for the process to be easy. So if you weren't planning on using circs for your project and you don't have them in the correct size, this might be an issue. The cast on can be done using double pointed needles or straights, but it will be more difficult. The tension and stitch orientation issues of the figure eight cast on are resolved with Judy's magic cast on, although Judy's is more difficult to execute. And while the Turkish cast on is the easiest of the three to execute, it can feel a bit nebulous on the needles. But Judy's magic cast on is very stable with each loop a distinct stitch on the needle. Now this stability is a nice quality if you need a provision to provisionally cast on a large number of stitches and in this situation, Judy's would be my preference over either Turkish or figure eight methods. One potential problem casting on a large number of stitches is estimating the length of tail that you need, but you can solve that problem using the same strategies you can use for the long tail cast on by using two separate strands of yarn or by spit splicing two ends together. You can even use two different colors for Judy's Magic Cast On. The chief disadvantage with Judy's Magic Cast On as a provisional cast on is that the provisional cast on loops create a row of knit stitches. This is fine if you're working in stockinette or garter stitch, you can bind off graft or work in the opposite direction just as you can with any other provisional cast on. But if you're using any sort of knit purl stitch pattern, it will be disrupted by that row of knits. The extra row of knits Judy's Magic Cast On creates may need to be taken into account in another way when working your pattern. If your pattern tells you to work for a specific number of rows, you might need to work one row less than that. An example of this would be if you were starting a shawl with a garter tab, rather than working six rows and then picking up stitches along the edges of the garter stitch ridges, you'd only work five rows before doing the stitch pickup. Well, that's it for this series on closed cast on methods that can also be used as a provisional cast on. If you've watched the entire series, you will have noticed that there isn't a single cast on that is perfect in all situations. Like most families of knitting techniques, you will probably prefer one technique over the others, either because you prefer the process or the result. And you will tend to use that method as your default. Now, over time, you may come across a pattern where your preferred technique is just not the best choice for your project and the technique you prefer least ends up being ideal. That's how knitting works and that's why it's great to have options. If you have any questions or comments about this video or suggestions about videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or you can join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks, and there's a link to that down in the description box below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you would. You can click on my face over here to do that. To see a complete playlist of this video series, click up here. For my sock related videos, click down there. And for all my cast on videos, click over here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.